talk to you about a proposal uh, that the FIM, I'm putting to the FIMS group for uh, open source working uh, going forward so that all the, the, the FIMS uh, specification development will be carried out uh, in the open. Uh, so my name is Richard Cartwright, uh, I work for Snell Advanced Media. Uh, also presenting in this uh, talk will be Brad Gilmer from the AMWA um, and we're at IBC 2015. So a quick introduction, well FIMS is already open isn't it? Uh, so what, what, what do you mean by FIMS open source? Uh, and the reality is that we publish openly at the moment, but we do our development privately uh, and we'd like to open that up. Um, we'd like to do open source development using Git, uh, which is a version control, version management system uh, that's very popular in the open source community. Uh, FIMS is actually already using Git privately. What we'd like to do is use it in the open. I'm going to quickly show you the, the structure of how we'd expect the FIMS repository to look. Um, and then how we would use the GitHub process to do additions to FIMS, fixes to FIMS, and also enable people to make derivatives of FIMS and for us to be able to record related projects in FIMS. Um, I will also then hand over to Brad Gilmer who will discuss some of the issues to do with IPR and licensing. So, open source. FIMS already delivers its publications openly. They are published, there's no cost uh, to downloading those, and we provide schemas that are technical and can be used directly in a software product uh, with an Apache 2.0 license, so the, you know, a permissive license. Um, but to participate in the development of those specifications at the moment, you have to sign the FIMS participation uh, agreement. Um, so, and then you are given access to the private uh, GitHub if, if you're uh, working on the technical artifacts. Um, but we would like the core process of FIMS to run a lot faster. Uh, and uh, I think at the moment, if you're outside that process and you can't see it, it's a bit like, hello, is there anybody there? Is anything happening? And then you know, every year or so at a trade show, another FIMS pops out. But that's very slow compared with a lot of other things that are going on in open source development. Um, and we'd like to encourage the parallel, you know, we know there's lots of parallel developments of service-oriented architectures going on outside of FIMS, um, but that doesn't mean that they, you know, that they can be related to FIMS. We'd like to get more people involved with the FIMS process and, and to get more value. Um, we want to enable all, everybody to be able to grow FIMS, whether they're a member or not. Therefore, we want to work in the open and we want to encourage people to contribute back additions, fixes, derivatives, and related projects. Um, we also want to work in an open source way that is unsurprising to people who are working on other open source projects. So uh, GitHub has a whole culture uh, and social aspect to it, and we'd like to become uh, part of that rather than being uh, uh, separate from it. So Git and GitHub, Git was uh, originally developed for the management of the Linux operating system's source code by Linus Torvald, uh, and therefore it was designed to manage uh, millions and millions of lines of code uh, contributed to by hundreds of people, but also to manage that process so that um, there is only one authoritative Linux kernel, but we have no, there's no problem with there being hundreds of different Linux uh, distributions. But because that kernel is controlled, then it's safe. So we know that we can run a core FIMS project like that, like Linux, uh, that has uh, the safety uh, of management and authority that this is where interoperability happens, but also we can enable people to make their own versions uh, and uh, be profligate with uh, their use of FIMS. So we have registered uh, FIMS TV as a project on, on GitHub, uh, and there is a FIMS uh, project in there, and that is where uh, the FIMS core uh, will end up. At the moment we're working on FIMS v1.2, we've worked in a private GitHub, uh, so we already are using Git uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that process now. Um, so what we did in our core process was we started with uh, version 1.1 uh, and we branched that to make a FIMS 1.2. Uh, we had uh, four parallel projects then, which became branches. They were all being worked on in parallel by different teams. So we had a REST project, a QA project, a time code project, and also a, uh, there was also a service capability description uh, project. 
and those branches were able to work independently and unable to work independently. When they had dependencies, they could merge between one another. Um, when that was completed, we merged back onto the FIMS 1.2 branch. We did a technical validation. We went out for IPR review and review by the AMWA and EBU uh, processes. Um, that was then approved, and then we're now merging those changes back onto the master branch. So the, the master branch is the published version of FIMS, uh, and all the other branches are the development versions of FIMS. But one of the powers of Git is we were able to start working on FIMS 1.3 before FIMS 1.2 was approved, and we will now merge the changes from FIMS 1.2 review process out onto the 1.3 branch. And that is exactly what Git is designed to do, to manage all your different versions and to manage your merging. So that is the, the, the core process, and that's currently being done controlled and in private. Uh, I'd like to propose that we move towards uh, this kind of structure. Um, so we have a readme file, and the license files, the schema files, a space for sample implementations, a space for FIMS test, which is going to come out of the FIMS test project. Um, migrate the Word document that we have to uh, markdown files that work uh, natively uh, with Git and will display in GitHub. Uh, and also we can then version control our documentation in the same way we version control our schemas and our source code. Uh, we can also include any contribution forms that are required under the IPR process and start to add in some examples of various different services and their actual capability, their service uh, capability descriptions so that people can can see at the moment we don't have an examples folder but we will actually make that a core part of, of FIMS open source going forward. Um, but the power that we then have using the GitHub process is that as well as having the core process we can encourage external organizations just to take their own fork of FIMS, have a complete and rich and deep copy of FIMS, make changes and then work in four different uh, classifications of ways, four different ways. One is an addition, uh, making adding additional things. One is to propose a fix. Uh, one is to create a derivative project. Uh, and one is to create some a related item of work. Uh, and I'm going to go through those various categories now. So we'll start with making an addition. So we know that there are, there are a number of companies out there who have developed FIMS-like services, or they have a number of adapters. So uh, maybe as well as a, a, a transcode service, um, they've got some other uh, um, uh, services, for example, a graphics service, or a, a publication service, or a playout service. They've actually taken the FIMS model and already developed a whole SOA around it. And it's similar to FIMS, it's not quite FIMS, but they can take it now, they'll be able to take a fork of FIMS, add their new services that they've developed, and then they can sort of come back to us, knock on the door with a pull request and say, uh, would you like to have these additional services in FIMS? And we can do a, a relatively quick review of that, create a branch, uh, as long as they give us a contribution form, we can then bring those services onto the branch and use the same core process that I showed on the previous slide to go through a review and approval process, and then these services will find their way into v1.3. And if they then update uh, their services in the future, they can make another pull request, and we can do the repeat the process over again. So they can maintain in their own uh, repository updates, and then we can pull them in at appropriate stages in FIMS development. Um, Another issue that's actually come up with FIMS 1.2 already is that there's uh, been a couple of issues spotted or uh, things that would, if we could just make those quick changes, then, then the FIMS would be much more applicable to the DPP process. Um, so an issue has been spotted. Uh, so if someone spots an issue, they're enabled to immediately make a deep copy of FIMS, fix the problem, make a pull request. And if it's just a minor non-substantive change, then we might as well just go to a version 1.2.1 and say, that's it. No need for any deep or rich, meaningful process uh, to, to, to review and approve, although we'll have to confirm that. Uh, this is just the proposal. There's another case where uh, someone uh, is, for example, building a media SOA in their own business. Um, they see FIMS, they think it's a good thing, but it does not quite fit. Or maybe, uh, for example, it's somebody in medical sciences is, is doing things like media, but it's not fully media. So they, don't, they would like to use the job model, but they don't want to use the metadata model because the metadata model isn't fit. 
in that case. So they can make a branch of FIMS, make a derivative, and then that can live its own life from that point onwards. There's no need for any pull requests back again. If they wish to update at any point, they can and merge back. But it can just become a project in its own right, uh, and it's, it's FIMS-like, and we can put it on our website as here's something FIMS-like. It's just in a different domain. What we also have is related, uh, potentially we might have related projects. So somebody might take the derivative and go, oh, I'm going to write an orchestrator over that, for example, uh, a job sequencer. So uh, uh, another company uh, uh, takes a, a branch of that, uh, they make a, a sequencer. And then actually that's quite a useful thing in its own right. It doesn't necessarily uh, have any direct relationship back to, to FIMS anymore, but it's a useful project. And actually, for example, might go back into the AMWA through the RFC process as an independent project. Um, and once again, it doesn't necessarily have to be merged back onto FIMS. It's not about FIMS. It's not, not part of the FIMS remit, but it is a very, very useful thing in its own right. And it becomes uh, a standalone project. But we have traceability back to where it was branched from and therefore we know the interoperability point of that. So with these non-core projects you can create, anybody can create at any time, everyone is enabled whether they're a participant or not. Um, you have the opportunity to contribute back to the core if there's value there uh, and so FIMS participants at that point can make a pull request so you'd have to be a FIMS participant uh, to be able to do that and the process will be administered via the FIMS uh, Architecture Council. Um, all non-core projects will be separate projects on GitHub, and they will not be the core project, um, but they will have a link back, uh, we can link to them if the requested to from the FIMS.tv website, uh, so we can say this is in our family even if it's not actually part of our core. Um, we always have traceability back to which version we branched from, and uh, we can um, always, also, these external projects can be updated to the current state of the core. Um, FIMS core uses the Apache 2.0 license, which is a fairly permissive license. Uh, we'd like forked projects to uh, respect that, because they're obviously we're taking from, uh, the, uh, from the core, and that is the applied license. Uh, the core project has the copyright of the AMR and the EBU, and uh, that will continue. Um, and the core work was done under the ANWR IPR policy. Um, so outstanding now, and the reason why this is a proposal and not finalised, is that there are ongoing discussions as to IPR issues. So I'd like to hand over to uh, Brad Gilmer, Executive Director of the AMWA, to discuss uh, the, the last couple of points about IPR. <laughs>